welcome in our good friend Joe Davidson yeah. of the Sacramento B High School playoffs getting underway uh, this weekend. Joe D, what's happening, man? It's your time of the year, baby. Damien, it's a good time of the year. Kenny, you looking good with a beard right there. Look at oh, that. You know, I'm trying to, you know, I try to stay fresh out here, Joe D. You know, I yeah, I, you know, I mean, some of us can't grow beards like that. That's that's a man's beard right there. Man, I'm still working on it too. I'm still working you know, on Damien's running his. Yeah, hand across his smooth chin, and you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damien Sneaky has the I, I call it the Brody Jenner because that's what Brody used to use that little five o'clock shadow, but they would shave it that way, yeah, right? like yeah. So it looks like oh, something's coming in, but no, I actually it never gets it any way. further, yeah. yeah. I, I don't let it grow any further because of the 10 different colors that come in. So once it prompt, once it turns gray, like I might be willing to rock with it, but. It doesn't, it just doesn't, I can't do it. I don't have the it, patience. I don't know it. how Kenny did it because, you know, the early stages of a beard, you just, it's like crazy and you're just scratching and, you know. You just, just, just got to get through the rough pass, the, the rough uh, pack uh, time of it all. And then, you know, you just let it flow after that. Stick with the process, right? Trust the process. Trust the process. That's, That's all it is. is. That's <laughs> what it is. Uh, Joe, anything surprise you when those uh, brackets came out this weekend? You know, nothing really. Um, and, you know, people... We're, we're in a complaining society. People complain for the sheer sport of it. And so for years, the Sac King section had 16 team fields. Mm -hmm. And your number 16 team would go to number one Folsom and it'd be 58 to nothing at halftime running clock. That doesn't help anybody. So then it got reduced to 12 teams, top four seeds, get an opening round by. Well, now there's not enough playoff teams. Hey, you know what? If you're in, go. And nobody's happy with their seeding unless they're number one. So uh, uh, no real surprise. Folsom's the number one seed in Division One. St. Mary's of Stockton's 10-0. Uh, the number two seed, that could be a collision course there. Oak Ridge is the third seed. Oak Ridge and Oak Grove could have a game next week against each other. Mm -hmm. That could be really good. Manteca, the Buffaloes are the top seed in Division Two. Del Oro of the Sierra Foothill League, only uh, league losses were to Oak Ridge and Folsom. They're the second seed in Division Two. Uh, Placer up in uh, Placer County is 10 and 0, the number one seed in Division Three. Grant is a three seed there. Grant's never been in the Division Three playoffs; always been Division One, Division Two, uh, but has a real chance to win that. And right on down the line, you know, we we got those brackets uh, at the Sac Joaquin section site or sacb.com. But no real surprises. But if Folsom doesn't get to a final, that'll be a surprise. Folsom got uh, one more big win before these all dropped on Thursday, didn't they? They they beat my Rockland Thunder. They did 14-7. And Ooh. that was a great effort for Rockland. Uh, normally Folsom scoring 40 or 50 points. So that just shows you how tough that league is. And, you know, and Folsom and Coach Paul Doherty, they like the, they like the bullseye. You know, mm -hmm. we, we want to be a target. It means you've arrived. Yeah. And, you know, they could talk about going to a state championship without people laughing at them. Most schools, oh, we're going to go win the win the state championship. Man, you, you may not even win a playoff game. So uh, there, there, there's a target there. And I've written about this before in, in the Sacramento B guys, where his, his Folsom success kind of dulled the Division One playoff field. Because if Folsom wins a section championship, it'd be their 10th since 2010. And some of it called the Folsom Bulldogs fatigue, where it's too much of Folsom. Well, then, then do something about it. I think yeah. there's intrigue in seeing if they can continue to win. And there's intrigue to see, can somebody bounce them off? 2019 in the Division One semifinals, Monterey Trail beat them. Yeah. And, and, and the game high school football, the, there's 48 game minutes in that 2019 game, Monterey trail with its run game had the ball for 40 minutes is one of the great upsets in regional history. So we may get a, a rematch there at some point, but uh, yeah, you know, topple them, topple them. And Del Oro has been doing this for years and flash has been doing this for years and Manteca. So the playoffs are also a good time for the upstarts. Where are the upstarts? Who's mm -hmm. going to pull upsets? Um, who, who's going to be the team with four or five losses who gets their section final? It'll happen, um, and it's happened, and it's happened before. So we'll see. We'll see how it shakes out. Yeah, I I, I hear you when you talk about you know, um, is there some fulsome fatigue? I, I can understand it, and it's no fault of their own. They're doing their job. They're doing what they need to do. Um, and I agree with you. If if you got fatigue, find a way to to knock them off. Right. But you, you do. You, there, there's a there's a fine line that you want to have, I believe, of um, a dominant program that everybody's looking to you know shoot for, and then enough teams that can knock them off. 
in the area. I think this year you got you got a good mix of that, right? So absolutely, is absolutely the favorite. But you got uh, your your St. Mary's, your Monterey Trails, your Oak Ridges, Elk Grove. Right. Like I think they all could compete with Abs- absolutely. And remember, a year ago, Folsom finished third in the Sierra Foothill League and had lost three of its final five games going into the playoffs, and were not the favorite. Rockland was the favorite. Rockland was the favorite because Rockland had dropped down a beat down on Folsom just weeks earlier, but Folsom bounced back and won it. And that's the other thing that's great is how do you respond? How do you come back? How do you bounce back? And we forget these are high school kids on a big stage. There's a lot of pressure. And you hear these fans and these parents just dumping on them and, oh, you got to make a better play. Hey, man, go stretch, drink your pickle juice and, and hydrate and come out here and play. Otherwise, keep it quiet. They're high school kids. I heard that last week uh, through – uh, social media, you know, Sac State is trying to get the eight no in football, ranked second nationally, and people were sending me notes. Well, that Jake Dunaway sure sucks, and that coach Troy Taylor's overrated. I said, "Hey, man, there's still a fourth quarter. We'll see how it plays out." And they, and they won, and so they're already. I guess you know you've arrived when people are bagging on you. Yeah. And uh, you know, I did something. You know, all oh, that Dunaway, he's so overrated. I did a story on the kid last week. His father is blind, and he comes to all of his games. And he can't see the games because his vision's gone out the last three or four years, but he could feel the game. And he's already graduated, Jake Dunaway has. So he's not a, a loser. He doesn't suck. He had two interceptions. And then Sac State said, okay, we'll, we'll adjust. And they did, and they won the game. So, you know, you, you hear it. Katie, you've heard it over the years. Yeah. Damon hears it all the time. You guys probably hear it about your, you know, what are you guys uh, talking about beards? Never, when you got coming never up? hear that. If, 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 <laughs> if, if you listen to stands at, at, at McClatchy High School, uh, Cheryl L. Grove, she, she'd step to you. She'd pull up on you if you said something crazy. There's a good chance if you say something about D-Lo and KC, Cheryl from L. Grove will step to you. <laughs> There's no doubt. I mean, she's probably, the, you know, she's probably the bouncer outside your, your studio right now. Nice sweat top, by the way, Damien Barley. Look at that. We got, little, good job, PC promotion there. We got you, Joe D. We yeah, got we'll, you. We'll, 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 oh, I'd like to have one of those. You guys have hats in those? We we do Absolutely. actually uh, somewhere, but they're, they're they're tucked away on the website. But have we, your we'll, we'll, we'll send one my way. We'll, we'll 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 get you set up, Joe D. Um, with so many different divisions, like is it well, is 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 it just clearly Folsom is the best team in the in the in the region? Well, there's a there's some good argument, Damien, that uh, St. Mary's is the best team in this section. Went 10 and 0, um, beat De La Salle. We all know about De La Salle. Beat them 45 35. Folsom two weeks earlier beat De La Salle 24 20. So there's some of that argument there. But Folsom is in a much stronger league, the Sierra Foothill League. Um, is Folsom better than anybody in Division Two? Probably. If your number two seed is Del Oro, uh, and they handle Del Oro, um, and you know, so yeah, there's. Uh, you know, the other reason to go watch these high school games is go watch some of these players who are going to college. Rico Flores Jr. of Folsom is headed to Notre Dame. Not everybody goes to Notre Dame. You got to be a great student, a great player. He's a 4-0 student, a great receiver, might be an NFL guy. Um, if running is your thing, Oak Grove football runs the triple option. Uh, they're in Division One, and they may win that bracket. Can they get past St. Mary's? Maybe. Can St. Mary's stop their run? So, uh, you know, I – I've been doing this forever, guys, and the playoffs are always fun. It's a different animal. It, you know, the, the section championships are at Hughes Stadium at Sac yeah. City. That's a great yeah. little venue. Yeah. And all section champions advance to a NorCal playoff game. Yeah. Uh, that's been expanded over the years because there's been there were years, guys, where a team could be 12 and 0 and didn't advance because their strength of schedule wasn't as good as the team that had four losses. So now it's been implemented, rightfully so. If you win a section championship, you get a chance to play for a regional championship well i like that is it too much football well maybe for that team but not for everybody not everybody's playing 14 games yeah and and when they get to that point refresh my memory um joe i know in basketball they got an open division do they have that in football is there still just division one division two they um there was a norcal open division football championship in 2012 and 2013 and both times Folsom had 14 and 0 teams and with Jake Browning as a sophomore and junior. And then they took on De La Salle and then just had the hammer dropped on them. So mm-hmm. then the state CIF governing body said, okay, you know what? De La Salle has been so good. If De La Salle keeps winning its section championship, we'll take we'll send them straight to the open division championship. Mm-hmm. And so they didn't have to play a regional. Well, this year they're not as good. De La Salle has the losses to Folsom and to St. Mary's. Um, 
and Sarah. And so who, let's say if, if Folsom wins this section championship, probably not going to be the open division entry because they have a loss to Sarah. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's way too far ahead, but that makes it interesting. So to answer your question, no, we don't have an open division. It's not going to be played this year, but it might be reintroduced down the road. Gotcha. And not to get too far in the weeds here, uh, but how did Laguna Creek not make the uh, – how yeah, did they miss out? We, we, that's kind of our adopted team on this show. So Laguna Creek went 7-3. and three. They're of the Oak Grove Unified School District, played in the Metro League that has – Two powerhouses, Monterey Trail Grant. Both those teams beat Laguna. It's a complex system. In the old playoff format of a couple years ago, if there were 16 teams in each division, they would have been in. But they were rated. There's a formula, and they were rated, I think, 13th out of 12. And so there was no room for them. Um, that's a tough pill to swallow. Ryan um, uh, Nil, the coach there, is an alum of the school. He has to tell us, guys, we didn't get in. Uh, and, and then it's tough. And there's other examples, Damien and, and, and Kenny, where like El Dorado High School, up a Placid, a small school, they beat their rivals, Union Mine of El Dorado, like 49, 20 or something. The team that lost goes to the playoffs. The team that won did not go. Um, different division. It's, you know, the coaches and the, the, the member schools vote on how many teams they want when they have these voting, you know, do we want 16 team fields? We want 12. So it's, you know, it's, if they want change, they have to talk about it and create a plan and vote for it. You can't just do it by with an email and, and complain, but those two schools have, have every reason to be irked. And, um, you know, Laguna Creek had two non-league games against Elko Unified School District rivals, if you will, against Pleasant Grove and against Franklin, both mm -hmm. massive enrollment, both division one, but they combine those two teams, I think won three games. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that didn't help Laguna Creek's resume. Um, or Laguna Creek. Yeah. But Laguna Creek has a non-league win against Roseville, which is in the playoffs. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Unfortunately, doesn't mean they don't have players. They have a guy named Malachi Bean say, who is a fast rising recruit. He can play, um, you know, guys could still get scholarships. You don't make the playoffs, but uh, sometimes that happens. If, Laguna Creek was in the Division One or Division Two playoffs. They might have been seated really low and might have had a first round game against Folsom mm -hmm. or against Manteca. So it might have been, you know, a quick out anyways. But they don't get that opportunity to show what they can do. And upsets do happen in the playoffs. Shout out to my guy, Coach Neil. Man, he was the uh, little league coach for for Reese this past year. Man, so uh, good dude. He's doing a great job over there, at Laguna Creek. I I actually went on the bright side. I, Aren't they pretty young? They got a lot of got a lot of young sophomore players. quarterback, a lot of young guys. Um, I saw them in a Thursday home game, and you know, Casimir's River College is their home venue. And I thought, okay, there's probably not gonna be anybody here. It was packed. The band mm -hmm. was there. Yeah. The the students were there, and and it's been something we've seen all across high school football this year and last year. Is if you have an entertaining team, the students will show up. The band will show up. The fans will show up. The alum, because it's a good product. It's a good entertainment value. So their reward was for them a playoff berth and they didn't get it. So it's still a good season, probably their best team in 20 years. And, you know, the work continues and they'll keep going. They'll keep grinding. Next yeah. year. Next year is the year also for my guys, McClatchy Lions. Next year, rough year this year. We're coming back next year, baby. We're getting it going. I'm telling you, we're getting it going. Let's go. We we got to go to a basketball game and check out that great venue uh, there. Uh, you, know, you know, I'm ready for basketball season, John. And, I'm ready. On, and we'll go check out some yeah. games. There's some yeah. really good basketball around here. And we got public schools like Sheldon, Intercom, Grant, Monterey Trail. And we got Jesuit will probably be our preseason number one. And yeah. uh, Andre Stojakovic is, is the area's best player, the son of Peja Stojakovic, who has coached him up. And this kid is dynamite, 6'7", He's point guard skills yeah. may go to Stanford, may go to Texas. I mean, you go anywhere, uh, maybe a pro down the road, but what a nice mentor to have in Peja. And Peja told me, he goes, he's got way more skills than I did at this age. Peja couldn't handle the ball like that. Nobody could shoot like Peja still the best shooter at the dinner table every night. But, uh, <laughs> I think that, I think the kid could take the old man, uh, in, in the backyard hoop battles for sure. Joe, don't 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 announce what games you and Kenny are going to. I don't think the crowd at that that McClatchy Arena could handle. You know, if they knew <laughs> if Joe they D. knew if they it's knew Joe Kenny Caraway was well, but Kenny you know, we'll get, we'll get Kenny's mother to to kind of just pave the way. Clear <laughs> out, clear out. 
that that'll that'll fix everything. Uh, you're the best, Joe D. We appreciate you as always, my friend. Always good. Always good. Thanks, Damian. Thanks, Kenny. We'll talk soon.